Hi, okay, now for some math. So, what is the speed of light, first of all? All right, we've got electricity. Everybody says electricity travels at the speed of light. Well, it does and it doesn't. If it's on co in a copper cable and there's insulation around it and there is an outer screen or something, then it doesn't travel at the speed of light. It travels at a different speed, slower than the speed of light. But we need to start somewhere. So what is the speed of light? Well, I've just did a quick Google and, well, basically looked on Wikipedia, and here's the speed of light, and it is exactly 299,792,458 meters per second. Okay, so we need to get that into something more reasonable. So let's just go to an Excel spreadsheet. Okay, so now we know the speed of light. 299,792,458 meters per second. So what is that in feet instead of meters? Because I prefer to work in feet. Well, if you multiply it by 3.2808, you'll get feet per second which gives us this rather large number right here. I'm not going to bother reading it all out. And we want, because we're measuring the length of a cable, I want to know how many feet it is. So um, it probably is easier to understand the speed of light in seconds per foot instead. So if we simply divide, one, put one over feet per second, we get seconds per foot instead, which is 1.016 72 e to the minus 9, which is basically 1.01 six or 1.017 um, nanoseconds per foot traveled okay so given that we just did our measurement and we had 64.8 nanoseconds so let's just put this in here all right um, 64.8 nanoseconds so if we multiply that by the seconds per foot sorry divide that by the seconds per foot we should effectively get the number of feet so if we do um, this divided by this we get let's just change this to be um, in nanoseconds as well because the first one's in nanoseconds and so is this one so let's multiply that um, times one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, just make the math easy. All right, so basically what that kind of tells me right now is that the length of my cable is 63.7 meters. Well, I know that's not correct, and also one of the things you need to be aware of is that this is reflected time, so it's the time it took to go out past the oscilloscope and come all the way back again. So we at least have to divide this by two to get the real length. All right, so let's just call this um, t traveled distance. Okay, so we'll divide that by two. So we'll just call this length for now, but um, so we'll just say equal equals this divided by 2 equals 31.86 feet. Well, I happen to know that that is quite a way off. Um, the cable I've got is not that length. Now, why do I know this is wrong? Well, coaxial cable has, uh, well, actually any cable that's using two pairs that are close together has this thing called a velocity factor and what I'll do in the text in a moment is put a bunch of diagrams that will really show you what a cable looks like especially at a higher frequency where its uh, characteristic p impedance comes into play so for coaxial cable if I go into um, Google again let's just bring that up here a second here we go and if I just Google um, 50 ohm coax velocity factor. All right, so velocity factor of wire. Let's just use this one. Um, so what you're seeing here is some various 66%, 69%. 
um, etc. So what I've I've done is I've actually played around a little bit, and be, it depends on what the medium is that you have um, for the cable. So on my previous sheet here, I've got RG58. I happen to know that the velocity factor is 66%. So if I just go back to what we're doing, um, because the cable is basically, um, I'm going to jump the gun a little bit and tell you, because the pay cable has inductive elements and capacitive elements, it slows down the pulse. It's a bit like an RC network um, put on the output of a square wave. All right? So it's going to slow it down going all the way down the cable and coming all the way back again. The factor for the cable that I'm currently using is 66%. So this length of 31.86 feet is not quite right. So if we multiply um, the RJ58, which is what a cable I'm using, so if I put in RG58 um, velocity factor is um, 0.66, so 66%. All right. Actual. So we'll just capture capture. The actual length here after applying the velocity factor would be this value multiplied by the velocity factor, okay, which now gives us 21.03 feet. Now, I've done this measurement before, all right, and the cable itself is actually 249.5 inches. So if I put in here, measured with a ruler um, 249.5 and we'll just divide that by 12 to get the feet uh, helps if I put an equals in front of it okay we actually get 21.79 so as you can see just by and my scope is not a very expensive one it's actually quite a low cost one um, so I'm not sure how accurate it is, but nevertheless, you can see here that the actual length 21 and the measured length 20.79, I'm only 0.8, so 0.2 feet out. And if you consider the fact that there's also a um, T piece which has to be taken into consideration as well, that dips into the um, oscilloscope and back out again, that adds probably another. Uh, 0.2, so about three inches of a foot. So when you actually do that, you'll find that it's actually measured that very, very accurately, which is quite impressive. So what we've done is, you know, we've actually using a pulse, using the speed of light and the velocity factor, we've actually met now successfully measured the length of a piece of wire. Um, now, if you can imagine, if this was a piece of wire that was running through walls and everything else and you actually didn't have easy access to the far end of it, um, how would you actually be able to tell the propagation delay and therefore calculate um, the length of the wire? Right? This allows you to do it from a single end using a pulse, which is really, really cool. Okay. Um, so what happens if I use different kinds of wire? Well, different kinds of wire do have different velocity factors, so I'm just going to Bring up, I'm just going to switch over to here right now. All right, um, the next piece of wire I'm going to use is an RJ6 piece of cable, and its velocity factor is 0.81. And um, RJ, let me just copy those and bring them across. An RJ, uh, unshielded twisted pair has a velocity factor of 0.73. So let me just take these to these other sheets, and I'm just going to pa paste them um, in here just as values. Let's just get rid of that one because. We already did that one first. So this one is RJ58. This one is um, RG6. Uh, RG6 is your basic TV um, cable that would run off your roof or your cable satellite TV kind of um, value. And this last one is unshielded twisted pair. This is your typical network cable that would run through your walls um, or in an office building um, and things. So. Um, let's just now go back to the video and we'll look at uh, measuring a different piece of wire, which I have, you know, I've got a couple of samples here that we'll go through.